it's two ninety five. Right. Ain't it time to start? Mm-hmm. These actually those clocks are wrong, both of them. Good evening everyone. I would like to welcome y'all to our Tuesday night Bible study. It's good to see y'all guys back on and joining us on this evening. I'll be reading our scripture on this evening. I'll be reading um, Psalms 1 from the New Living Translation, and it's the entirety. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruits each season. Their leaves never went their leaves never winter. They are prosper they are prosper in all they do. But do not but not the wicked, they are like worthless shaft scattered by the wind. They are they will be Condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will not have no place along the godly. For the, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. I have read Psalms 1, the entirety, verses 1 through 6, from the New Living Translation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So grateful to be able to be here on Tuesday night once again to receive from God what he has to give us. Amen. Amen. If we can um, prepare our hearts for prayer. Our um, Father, we're so very grateful. We're grateful to, Lord, to you, Lord, that we are able to be here tonight. God, we know that when we come together that you're in the midst. And we thank you for that, oh God. And Father, whomever may be watching all around it, whatever by whatever means, God, just touch their hearts and minister to their hearts and meet their needs where they are right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask you right now to just send your healing power virtue throughout your people. Because, Lord God, without you, we know you are the healer. And we look to you for our healing. Thank you, God, for being so loving, so kind. And, Father, as a man of God, brings the word of God. We ask that you will be with him. Strengthen him, Lord, and continue to do the things in him, Father God, that you have called him to do. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody. Amen. Amen. How y'all doing? Good. Glad to have everybody in the building, on the phone, and on live. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mother Larry, how are you? That is so good to hear. All right, y'all. Remember, I got to call her. I've been kind of busy trying to get ready for class tomorrow, and I have not called um, Mother Ann. But y'all keep in your prayers. Um, she was getting better when I did talk to her, and I'm going to make sure I call her and check on her today. Amen. But keep her in your prayers, everybody. Um, so, y'all good? Amen. Everybody? That was a good message Sunday, wasn't it? Amen. Now, don't mm-hmm. we mess that verse up. <laughs> don't we mess it up, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can still not be messed up. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we only go with that one part. And, and that's something that um, I'm going to spend at least a few weeks. And y'all bring out your verses. And let's do some application. Um, you know, because it is all about a transformed life. So, um, here's why we do this. It's not centered. Because I can see 
it ain't center. All right, so we need to get it right. Amen, y'all. Amen. People be looking at me on a piece of the screen. Mm. All right, so um, getting a piece of a verse, or um, I, I can't remember which one it was, but one of them said that um, if we um, are looking for something biblically subjectively instead of looking at it objectively, you're looking at it for what you want to get out of it, yeah. not for what it is going to really do for you. Because sometimes, man, um, when something hurts, it's your body telling you something is wrong. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Have you all have ever had a, um, I went, um, I come to find out, I ate, I'm trying to eat right, y'all, okay? <laughs> And I ate some turkey hot dogs. Turkey hot dogs, y'all. Mm -hmm. Turkey hot dog. Mm -hmm. That's good for you. Right? Maybe. <laughs> it could be. You right. Allergies or something like that. I didn't have no allergies, but I evidently got a bad batch to the point where I will never eat another turkey hot dog. <laughs> All right. So... I, I I thought it was kidney stones or um, a, a, a appendicitis. I don't know what I ain't know what it was. I bet that thing hurt so bad. It was in my back, and it woke me up. And I got up out of the bed, and I was like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> it was hurting. You ain't gonna make it. So. <laughs> So I, I went in, went in the living room and sat in the um, um, and what is one of the conditions you would you would you would um, throw up? I was looking at um, you know kidney stones and something else with your kidneys or something like that. And I thought it was that. You mean appendicitis? I think it was appendicitis or so it's another condition with the. Um, 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 it, um, um, no, what do you call it? Um, food poisoning? No, it wasn't that. It was, um, something with your colon. I thought it was that. Yeah, diverticulitis. I thought it was that, and I went and Googled it, and it said you you would throw up, and you would, out, and I had them symptoms. I was all right till I went up and sat on the um, um, in my recliner chair in the living room. And when I was sitting there, I felt it coming up, and I ran to the bathroom just in time, and I started <laughs> Ralph Earl and the and the family car Buick. Okay, all right, and I said, okay, something's wrong. And I went to the emergency room. Y'all know for me that ain't nothing I've ever done in my life. You know, too much before till recently. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm going. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and they ran um, all kind of tests, C scans, X rays, and that thing was hurting me so bad it was gas. All <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> you just need some sprite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It oh, hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was hurting oh, really? so bad. Oh. I was like, "My God, what in the world?" It, it, it was bad. They gave me morphine. It was hurting so bad. Oh wow! Oh. I thought it was something else, but but then I thought about it. You ate them turkey hot dogs. I said, oh. So it was in the. Yeah, it was in the jet because. That I had no kidney stones. I didn't have diverticulitis. <laughs> I didn't have none of that. So everything, so y'all listen. Everything came up negative. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. Because I was, you know, worst case scenario, Lord have mercy, I don't need this here. My mother had diverticulitis and they took some of her colon or intestines. That's why she was sick all the years. That was, that was, that was, a, you know, she, she had a kidney transplant, but it was the other stuff that put her in the hospital. It was, it was that. Oh, 
So that's what had her in the feeding tube. That's what had, it was not the feeding tube, but the she had the bag. And um, then they went to um, reattach it, and that's what she had problems with. Oh. And uh, because she didn't want the bag anymore, and they reattached it, but it was only a little piece left. And from that, um, she had problems. Mm -hmm. so, so the last few years of her life, it was from that. So I'm thinking of all that stuff, and I'm bugging out and all that. Mm -hmm. But it, when I thought about it, they said, no, you don't have kidney stones. You don't have this. You don't have that. You don't have. And I was like, then what the heck is it? And then I thought, oh, it, man, them mm -hmm. darn turkey hot dogs. Mm -hmm. They didn't even tell me it was indigestion, but I knew that's what it was. If it, if it wasn't nothing else. So, I'm saying that to say this. Mm. In that CAT scan, or that x-ray that they took, there was a growth on top of one of my organs. Okay. I ain't know. Nobody knew. But it showed up in that, and they sent me to a specialist, and he was like, oh yeah, those things happen sometimes, and this and that, but we're going to make sure it doesn't grow anymore. And they, I had to run them tests. Matter of fact, I got this thing, I got to do these swabs, and I forgot all about that. Oh, Lord. So, um, so I got to do that and turn it in, but I ain't go weeks before that because I forgot about it. And then I oh, went to get blood for something else, and they found it, and they was like, oh, you got to do it. I said, oh, geez. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is, there, it was enough to make them send me to another doctor, mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. Mm. It was there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it ain't supposed to be there. So I'm telling y'all this is because there could be something that could hurt you spiritually. Mm -hmm. And because you went biblically to get something for yourself, not knowing that it's going to hurt you because there's no pain involved in it right now. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. so so understand what I'm saying? So that'll be selfishly you, you looking know, at the Bible. So, trying to read for um, So yeah, I'm going to give you this. I, on, on Sunday, two days ago, we preached. What is it? Y'all tell me again. What is it? Isaiah 54, 17, 8. No weapon. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. See there? Now deep in the back of the church here, singing the song that Fred Hammond wrote from that verse. The A clause of verse 17 of Isaiah 54. And when you hear that song, now Deacon Ball and Deacon Green was in my office just now, and we were talking about what it, what what is going to attract people to our church? And um, one guy was saying that uh, he came here, loved it, got the word and all that. But then he ended, went to another church and they had a choir. He went, oh yeah, I like that. I like that choir. And um, the the manager of the place said, "But you ain't getting no meat. What kind of meat you getting?" And um, and he was like, "Oh, he didn't get any." But he liked the choir. Okay, so imagine you go into a church and you hear Fred Hammond, the choir gonna say, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. Sing it, Bishop. Yeah. Amen. But that's how he does it, right? Yeah. But that's but he ain't put nothing else in the song about. The B clause and the C clause of Isaiah 54, 17. The whole verse. So y'all understand, it's the whole verse that we needed to get, which what we did on Sunday. And if you missed it, you need to go back and look at it. And it's called backslide in motion. Mm -hmm. Because that verse is not about you prospering. The verse is about backsliders. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. If you want to see it, you got to go and look at it for yourself. But but um, I'm telling you, Pastor Charmita, am I telling it like it is? You are a singer. You understand exactly what I'm talking about. My cousin Kira is watching in Orlando. Hey, cuz, what's happening? All right. So um, y'all see what I'm saying? 
there could be say you you you're trying to get something out of a verse that is not meant to make you prosper, but it's a warning for you. All right, you need to watch what you're doing, and you turned around. So, uh, okay, I got to go there. I've done it before. Um, Amos chapter 5, verse 18. Let's go. Amos, in the pots and pans division of your Bible. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. I think that's the way we're going. Maybe it's chapter 4. No, it ain't. Y'all remember I did this before, right? Amos. Oh, I think I know where you're going. Y'all remember this? What, what chapter was that in Amos? Oh, it's not um, and Elder Linden is on it I'm, I may have to change that Elder Linden I can't remember where it was or it's verse 8 um, no it ain't verse 8 y'all remember this one alright oh yeah Amos chapter 5, verse 14. So, Elder Linden is Amos chapter 5, verse 14. All right? I knew it was Amos 5 something. <clears throat> and I asked you all a question. If for those of you that know the answer, don't answer it. All right? Everybody got it? Amos chapter 5, verse 14. Y'all ready? Mm hmm all right, the verse says this. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. What, and I didn't, that's, that's just the A clause, but that's what we're famous for when we cliche verses, yeah. right? Verse. We just get, so what does, what, does that sound like a verse of encouragement or rebuke? Encouragement. She said encouragement. Anybody else that doesn't know the answer that is here? Bless you. Thank you. So let's go with Kayla's. She said it sounds like a verse of encouragement. Because it does sound like that. And here it goes again. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Mm -hmm. So if you all don't know what I'm doing now, we're talking about application. Um observation is we got to know what God said before we go to interpretation which is what does God mean and, and, and between the both of them once you know what God said then you can interpret what he means mm -hmm. then application comes where it will transform your life mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of Christians are not growing is because their application is being ignored mm -hmm. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. So, why is it you've been in church five years and you still act in the same way? Mm -hmm. You ain't grown none. We should all grow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised and I'm very happy. I grow every year. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, and I'm not done yet. Keep living. I've been going back pulling old sermons out that I hadn't preached since 2011, 2012, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I totally butchered them. Now, they're not the same. And some of them, even the title has changed because I've grown since then. Amen? Man, some of them, they were so long, you can tell I was green. I, I wiped a lot out. Man, that's too much. That's too much. And I took a lot out. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, um, so, th 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 what does that verse mean? Let's, let, let, let's do the rules of interpretation. So, we got to go back where, Deacon Ball, to find the answer. 
you know, you want to go back to the beginning of the chapter, get back, go back until you get some type of content. Right, which right. would normally be the paragraph theme mm -hmm. or the chapter theme. So in, in this one, there is, before verse 14, there is no paragraph theme. So we got to go back to verse 1. Yes, ma'am. I got a real good question. About yes, ma'am. We're going to get an answer. Because I'm reading it, but I think about so much when I read it. Okay. Right? So I try to apply it to myself, and I feel like I'm getting somewhere if I'm thinking something. You know what I mean? Right. Now, I know we all sinners still, right? Yeah. Even though we're still sinners, we can still do what's right. Here it says, do what is good and run from evil. Right. In the Bible, God says, if you do these things, you... you if you do these things, you love evil, right? But like, say with me, I know I hate doing some things. Let's say somebody say something to me, and I'm really doing what I'm supposed to do by holding myself and not being disrespectful back because I hate doing it. I right? tell you what, you, you read yeah. Romans seventeen, uh, Romans chapter seven. I'm right. sorry. See, see, this is this. this is you this read thing. Romans chapter seven, and that's gonna answer your question right there. Okay, so as far as it, you really go home and read that. Matter of fact, I told um, Brother Greg Dorsett to read Romans. I just want. I and I said, by the time you get to Romans seven, boy, that's gonna that's gonna clear up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's so what you're saying. You're trying to do right, but you end up doing wrong. No. This the thing, like let's see, I let's see, okay, let's see you see other people just doing things and being disrespectful to them. You hate it. Right. But then let's say somebody brings something you be trying to hold it, but you may end up going off on them, but you don't want to, but for me to go back That's exactly and talk what I was saying. About it, you went off on them but I you didn't want to go off on them. I hate it, but does that mean that even though I did it, basically I'm struggling with it? But Read. does that mean I still love it because I do it? No. Period? No. no. See, now I'm trying to take it face Read line. Romans 7. <laughs> and, it, and so, in essence, it tells you that there's a war going on within you. There is, your flesh is in there, battling with your spirit. And they're both fighting for control of what? You. Yeah. Your mind. But your see, mind. What I'm thinking is, he says, as long as you do it, that means you love doing it. So no. Like, I don't Because Paul says, it, I, that which I, I hate, don't. I end up doing. So oh, no, yes. you don't want to do it. You, 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 you don't want to do it. But before I run any further, but like I said, there's a war going on. And the more you succumb to it, that's who you following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, so when you, by the time you get to Romans 8, it said those that walk after the Spirit. Right, so that means if I see myself Do the things of exactly. the Spirit. So if I you see, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, oh, um, which means you got to go back to what you were doing in the beginning. Which, and, and, and you're going to have to ask yourself some questions. Am I spending time with God like I was at first? And if you're not, you will slip back into that other stuff so quickly. But I can see that because I'm spending time with him and I'm really recognizing what's Is going on. Is it quality? Okay, so um, let, me, let me hit this verse and show you. Because it, 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 you've got a... a, 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 a um, Countless number of Christians reading their Bibles every day. But if you don't follow the rules of interpretation, okay, the, the best way I can explain this is, and I've used this analogy before or, or, or this illustration. A broke clock is right twice a day. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Y'all know that, to be mm -hmm. true. Yeah, that's true. So, if Deacon Ball comes up to me and says, let's say it's 7 o'clock. Deacon says, it's 2 o'clock. 
would be, or it's midnight, because it's getting dark now. Say it's 7 o'clock, five hours from now, it'll be midnight. Or if we go back, it's 2 o'clock. That's a five-hour difference. If D comes up to me and he says, and I say it's 7 o'clock, man, it ain't 7 o'clock, it's just 2 o'clock. Or, man, you must have been asleep. It's midnight, right? So, Deacon Green comes up and he says, man, don't listen to him. It's only 7.05. <laughs> and I'm looking at my watch and it's 7 o'clock on the head. Mm -hmm. Right? Which one you gonna believe? Hmm? Come on, somebody. Please help me. Which one are you going to believe? I'm going to listen to I'm I'm going I'm to believe the five minute lie mm -hmm. over the five hour lie. Mm -hmm. Right? So what Satan does is he comes at you with a bunch of five minute lies. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, a, a, a broke clock is right twice a day. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's seven o'clock, but it's broke. <laughs> is it right or is it wrong? Y'all see, y'all see what I'm saying now. So, so the thing is, um, he comes at us with these these five minute lies. We'll believe those, but we ain't gonna believe them. So Satan's like, okay, he catch a weak, he'll kid you with a big lie. But if, uh, but normally you 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 gonna be on your guard. So he come up with these little lies. You'll accept that. So a Bible verse out of context is a five minute lie. Come on, somebody. Y'all okay, gotcha. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So reading this verse, mm -hmm. the wind blew it. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. And Kayla said it sounds like a verse of encouragement. Deaconess Mary Sadler said, um, she says Bishop uh, verse 4 is a good starting point as well, which is correct. All right, so she told what it is. Let's wait till we get to verse 4. All right, so going to verse 1. All right. So the wind didn't blow it. I moved it back there. Listen, you people of Israel. Listen to this what? Funeral. Listen to this funeral song. That don't sound too encouraging. <laughs> right? Uh, he says, listen to the funeral song I am singing. The virgin Israel has fallen, never to rise again. So now we know that part of this is he's using a song. All right? The funeral song I am singing. The virgin Israel has fallen, never to rise again. She lies abandoned on the ground with no one to help her up. That's a song. Mm -hmm. Funeral song. Mm -hmm. Then verse 3 says, The sovereign Lord says, After he used, So did we not need to know that? About verse 14, That a part of this, uh, Opening up to explain it, Is a funeral song? Did we? Mm -hmm. So that right there tells us, That this is, Verse 14, mm -hmm. Is not a verse of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we keep reading, that, Mary Sanders said 4, the sovereign Lord says, when a city sends a thousand men to battle, only a hundred will return. What does that sound like? Mm -hmm. A thousand men going to fight, nine hundred going to die. Yeah. All right? When a town sends a hundred, only ten will come back. So then they're going to send the hundred and only ten going to come back alive. Does that sound like a verse of encouragement? Oh, no. All right? So verse 4. Now, this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. All right? Come back to me and live. Now, verse 14. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. So it is a verse of rebuke or as Deacon S. Mary Sanders said, it is a verse of encouragement. Amen. Woo! Let me read what Pastor Sharmita is saying here. She said... Is what you strengthen in your spirit. Prayer and fasting along with resistance helps to strengthen the good that you really desire to do. All has come short. Just don't get in the practice of coming short. Which um, comes to, I'm not paying any attention to Deacon Lorenzo Green. All right. So, um, 
Romans 8 tells you those that walk after the, after the Spirit mind the things of the Spirit. Yeah. And that's pretty much what she said as well. So, um, so those are the things. The more you cuss them out, the more you go cuss them out. Y'all see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. The more you decide to keep doing what you're doing, the more you're going to do it. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah, We're talking about application here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a transformed life. Come on, somebody. <laughs> We're talking about a transformed life. All right? So she said, I'm sorry, I was slow on the draw. That was to encourage the one of, woman of God that thinks that she loves the wrong that she might do. Pastor, she needed to hear from you. Amen. Mm -hmm. She needed to hear from you. And when you come to Gainesville, Pastor Sharmita, I'm going to introduce you to her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, <laughs> amen. And, but, Pastor, I knew who you was talking talking to and about and what you were doing, um, which, um, whoo, Jesus, Holy Ghost. Um, we need to hear that. So, do you all see how we just practiced? Now we know what verse 14 in Amos chapter 5 means, right? And I picked that because whoever, who goes and reads Amos but? Not many. No. Mm -hmm. Just like they just like Revelation. I mean They'll read that more even though they yeah, may be scared yeah. to. Alright, so Deacon Ball brought up mm -hmm. another verse um last week where he said, um, oh my god, Elder Linda said, The dog you feed the most will gain strength, and the one you neglect will become weak. Woo! Yes. So, Romans 8, I believe it's verse 4. Those that, how did I say it? Those that mind the things of the Spirit or follow the, the things of the Spirit will, that's what you will, you, 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 will, you will practice that more. So, in your Bible reading, y'all, follow the rules of interpretation when you, when you do that. You won't get it out of context and then you'll know exactly what God means when he said what he said. Because the church is full of cliche. Mm. And we running around here saying that stuff. How many of y'all on Facebook see stuff like um, the devil tried to get me but he can't have me and all of this, all oh, this and that. Good. Okay, so, and then you come back again, and they F-bombing all on Facebook. I, I call them bipolar Christians, because one, you, you have the, um, you, you have the mistaken idea that God is going to get you out of no matter what you do. When in reality, you won't pay the consequences for yes, what sir. you did. Or the decision you make. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if you decide to go to Walmart and steal some fish, <laughs> you gonna get them and go outside the church and, and sell sandwiches. Wow. And you get caught. Prayer ain't gonna get you out of that. Sound like somebody on your television. I ain't saying nothing. Listen, that deacon ball come in. <laughs> but y'all got my point. Y'all got my point. You bust somebody's windshield out. You might have an arrest warrant up for you, even though you left. So. You 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 can't you 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 that verse ain't gonna help you. All right. So those are the ones that'll say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Ain't no weapon at you. You the worst weapon. Mm -hmm. Then they want to come to church and ask for prayer, <laughs> but you still going to jail. Mm -hmm. I pray for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
man want with it shall be served. But that warrant shall be served. <laughs> y'all understand? So, um, you know, y'all listen. That this I'm trying to help us, and this is why I want to spend time with um, application because we got to follow the rules of interpretation, which is what everybody. One, you gotta, you gotta. What did God say? Don't try to figure out what he means by going and getting a cliche verse and saying he's going to get me out of whatever I got myself into. <laughs> That's not going to help you. All right? And you got to go through the process. Yes. If you try to skirt and go around it, you're going to go back through it. Because that arrest warrant ain't going nowhere until somebody go to court. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Now, I go to the jail every week. I ought to know. I, I, I don't went to jail in court before. That was a long time ago, folks. Ooh. When do y'all want to start gossiping? Ooh. That was so long ago. I I, I had all black hair. Ooh, it's the same thing. Y'all understand? So, um, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, y'all. So, it, 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 let's let's play with this a little bit, a little bit, y'all. I heard Deacon Ball say last week, and y'all remember some of them other phrases, the week before that. Some of them other phrases. Was it last? It was last week. So Deacon Ball was up here, and he gave me some, some bullets. Here's what I heard him say. The poor will always be among us. Where is that, y'all? It's in John. And it happened right when he went, after Lazarus died, and he went to, um, went to see Lazarus in the grave, right? So I know that's where it was. Amen, Mm y'all? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on now. All right, so this is before I think it's in John, but where where is he? y'all y'all help me? Somebody Google it. Um, the poor will always be among us, and it'll pull you it'll pull you up. I know it's in John. The poor will always be among us. The poor will always be among us because. What is it, Charles? The Deuteronomy. No, well, it might be in Deuteronomy too, yeah. which means. Let's go to the gospel and get it, which means it's Mark, Mark 14, which means there's going to be a cross-reference beat. All right, so Mark, Mark 14. Mark 14, right? There's a lot going on in, in Mark 14. Right? So where is it? Um, Mark 14, what? Seven. Verse 7. Okay. Oh, Jesus. All right. So what do we do? So we're going to follow the rules of interpretation. So Mark 14, verse 7 says... Oh, wow. And look, we we even leave out the first parts of verse 7. You no, know, it starts off, you will always have the poor among you. And you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always be with me. Now, nobody says the rest of that verse. Right? Mm-hmm. Y'all that's watching now, let's take it for what it is. Because I was at work and I heard a guy say that when I work for Catholic Charities and we were having a staff meeting about how we serve and um, and we serve mostly the poor right so it is a part of the mission that we serve them with dignity and respect yes. so this guy blurts out, well, you know, the Bible says that the poor will always be among us. You know, like, they will always be here. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't say anything the first time. Year later, had another staff meeting. And he said it again. 
the poor was, well, the Bible says that the poor will always be among us. You know, like, well, ain't nothing we can do about that. They're going to always be here. And I'm like, I said, man, that verse you just said is out of context. That's not what he means. So y'all tell me. Okay, so the word of God says that the poor will always, you will always have the poor among us. King James says the poor will always be amongst us. Right? That's what he said. Is that what he meant? No. Before you read anything else, what did he mean? Does anybody know? Don't read it, y'all. Don't read it, because I know Audrey. <laughs> what did he mean? Is that what he meant? That the poor will always be among you? Is he talking about poor people? Is he talking mm -hmm. about financially challenged people? No. He's not. Go on and say it. Poor folk. Poor folk. <laughs> so let's find out exactly how are we going to find out exactly what God means. So we got to go back a little bit. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So we either go back to the paragraph theme or the beginning of the chapter or maybe the previous chapter. So what I'm looking at here is verse 3 mm -hmm. is the beginning of a paragraph theme. Mm -hmm. What's the first word in verse 3? Meanwhile. 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 Mm -hmm. That means something else happened before verse 3. Mm -hmm. So let's go back a little bit, but we, we can honestly say verse 3 is where we need to be, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 1 says the religious leaders plot to kill Jesus. So we can go back, we can honestly go back to verse 3 for that verse, verse 7. Am I right? Somebody? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go back to verse 3. He says, meanwhile. So whatever was going on. When, so when, he, when you say meanwhile, okay, y'all, um, we're watching a movie. Right? Meanwhile, And you got, uh, you, okay, Deacon Ball and Deacon Lorenzo is in Walmart. While they were in Walmart getting cleaning supplies for the church. Boy, that was good right there. <laughs> they saw a church person stealing catfish. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, it's a movie, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Now we know why they were in Walmart. They were in Walmart not to steal fish. Right. But they were in Walmart <laughs> to get cleaning supplies for the church. Mm -hmm. okay. Did y'all catch that hint? Yes, sir. <laughs> That wasn't right, was it? But it was good. So, meanwhile, the shift, the scenery shifts to the church. They're got the oil on the fire, heating up, waiting on the church person to come back with the fit. Amen. Okay. All right? So, they don't know. That the camera caught the person who went to the store to buy the fish, but gonna keep the money. Wow. Mm. So they in the store, Deacon Ball, Deacon Green, because both of y'all see pretty much everything, <laughs> right? Man, you see, you, look, 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 look at how far they they put that fish in the pan. All right. Meanwhile, the scenery shifts to the church. And they all got everybody in the yard. They got the fish cooker warming up the grease. That's meanwhile. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, we have to talk like this because this is how the Bible is written. So when we get to verse 3, we see meanwhile. Mm -hmm. So let's, I'm trying to help us with, the, with how we interpret. All right, so listen. It was in verse one. It was now two days before the fast Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus <laughs> secretly and kill him. Mm -hmm. But not during the Passover, they agreed, or people may riot. Mm -hmm. Verse three. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, okay, so before 
You got the religious leaders plotting to kill Jesus. Now you got Jesus in the house. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see how this works? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, that's meanwhile. So now verse 3. Meanwhile, y'all say meanwhile. Meanwhile. Jesus was in Bethany while the religious leaders are where? What? They're probably in Jerusalem. Meanwhile. That's where the Passover is. That's where the temple is. It's in Jerusalem. Am I, am I right? Mm -hmm. So now, verse 3, we find Jesus in Bethany mm -hmm. while the Jews are plotting in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Y'all following me here? Ain't this good stuff? Yeah. So we rob ourselves of all of this exciting stuff by taking verses out of context. And we miss this. I like that meanwhile stuff. So something's going on over here, but we over here. This is how it happens. So, so Jesus, uh, the religious leaders are plotting Jesus' death in Jerusalem. But here's Jesus in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Someone, some, at, some of those at the table were indignant. Who was this person that was indignant? Mm. Who? The woman with the, um, the woman. It was the Judas. Woman. And and so so therefore, um, the cross referencing will take us. Lorenzo, no, no, Deacon Ball said. The poor will always be among us from Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11. Yes, sir. Is that that story about the alabaster box that you're reading from? Yeah. Could be. Could be. But then again, listen to the song and see what it's saying. They probably cliched it. Just like, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. Cliche. Fred Hammond cliche the verse. Mm -hmm. Do y'all, I ain't hitting it again, nigga Green. I ain't messing with it. But y'all see what I'm saying? So we listen to this music. It sounds real good, but it's a cliche. A lot of and look, there's nothing wrong with the song. So I ain't telling y'all not to listen at it, but you need to know it's a cliche. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? I ain't bash afraid of that, but I like the song, quite frankly. All right, so let's go. Some of those at the table were indignant. Is that a who question? So who was, and it said some mm -hmm. of those at the table were indignant. When you do cross-referencing, you'll find out it was not some, it was one. Mm -hmm. And I know I said it was in John, all right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and from what I'm looking at, it's probably John 19 because uh, Judas got mad and said, what you doing that for? Okay, so... Um, some at the table were indignant and said, why waste such expensive perfume? They asked. When it wasn't they, it was he. All right? Um, it could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. Uh -huh. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to. But mm. you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of the time. I tell you the truth. Mm. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We have cliched it so much that from Mark was written around A.D. 60-something, Correct. To 2023. AD 60 something to 2023. AD. We have cliched it so much that the meaning of what Jesus said in verse 7, which now we know, 
um, came from John chapter 19 also in cross-referencing. And Jesus got that from the book of Deuteronomy. So for those of you who all say that the Old Testament is irrelevant, then why did Jesus use it? Okay, so if it's not about poor people, what is it about? Somebody. Somebody. I see you, Pastor, in the new, new Holy Cross phone. Somebody tell me, what is the verse about? It's not about poor people. It's about what kind of people? Poor in spirit. Say again. Okay, I heard poor in spirit. I heard the law. Somebody tell me. And now, now listen, this is another thing. And both of you are not wrong. All right? But this is what we typically do in church. If we was outside of this church and we were in Buffalo Wild Wings having this conversation, what would your answer be? Would it be a church answer? Y'all see my point? Amen. So what kind of people is Jesus talking about? So why did Judas say what he said? Let's look at what Judas said. Amen. Why waste such expensive perfume? It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So he's holding it harshly. Let's do some cross-referencing. Let's go to John 19. Let's go to John 19. Put your ribbon in, Mark. Let's go to John 19. We need, and so we put need, your ribbon in. <laughs> yeah, put my ribbon in there. So we need yeah. to get the whole thing to understand what is going on, right, y'all? We need to know, we need more information to find out. You got to go? Okay, all right, okay. They're cutting up. Lord Jesus, 60 year old man. All right, so what did I say, verse 40? No, you didn't say. Um, what does the cross reference say? It says John 19. It says John 19 verse 40 for verse 8. Um, but we know it's not that. All right. So my bad. That's not it. So we know that um, Judas said, um, it says um, Lorenzo. Or, or somebody Google um, because it, it, uh, Google Ju Judas had the bag. Google Judas had the bag. All right? Elder Linden, I'm putting you to work tonight. Amen. So, um, and we're going to stop, but I'm trying to give us, to show us how we get this in contact. And we're going to finish up. We're going to still work on this. Come tomorrow. So have your verse that you like to say a lot, and we're gonna we're gonna get it in context. We're gonna find out what did God say, what did God mean, and how it applies to our life. John 13. John 13? 1329. John 13:29. All right, everybody. <clears throat> Go to John chapter 13, verse 29. Woo, Jesus. All right, John 13, 29. The other Linden is on it. Y'all got it? This is going to give us a little more information, all right? So, since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. So, Judas left at once going out into the night. So, um, and, and before that, in the context there, at the Last Supper, and Jesus was saying, um, whatever you're going to do, Judas, go on and do it. Mm -hmm. And he got up and left. Verse 28 says, and none of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer. And it was Judas who went off and said, what you did that for? We could have sold that and gave the money to the poor. He wouldn't have gave that money to the poor. Right. He would have done what? Pocketed. He would have pocketed that money. So the verse that says the poor will always be among us, Jesus told that to Judas. 
So the verse is not about poor people, it's about what kind of people? Greedy people. I was going to say thieving people, but yeah. And thieving people. He was greedy. Mm -hmm. He was the treasurer, which means he was trusted. But over time, you know, Kayla, listen at this. Over time, he started stealing the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So that verse has nothing to do with poor people. Yeah. Because when Judah said that, he, if, if, if he wasn't going to sell that perfume and, and, and use the money for poor people. He was going to pocket it. Yeah, because he, he saw it as coming out of his pocket. Yes. That's why he was been out of shape. He was upset because he was going to pocket that money. And she had the nerve to bust that guy. You don't think Jesus knew that? Mm -hmm. That way, say, man, the poor always made a bond, but her, you know, and he knew he was going to die. He said, man, she's like, she's anointing my body for burial. And here you talking about poor people. You have them with y'all that. But the verse was not about poor people. So if you're saying that, which means I don't have to help them because the poor will always be among us. That ain't what that verse meant. All right? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I had a conversation with some about this very thing. We'll spend, we'll tithe to something worldly and come to church on Sunday morning and tip God. Mm -hmm. Somebody ain't gonna like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go tithe somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to go tithe to my boot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to church on Sunday and give God $2. Mm -hmm. That's a tip. We'll go to a restaurant and give 18%. Wow, yeah. And won't come to church and give God 10 mm -mm -mm. Isn't that something? Wow. Never thought about that. It, 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 look at it. God just asked for 10%, but you go to the restaurant, they want 18. Mm -hmm. And if you go, if you got more than, than, than what, five? It's eight. Eight. You got more than eight, but they don't take 18% off the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the tip. 18%. And then, you know, like we went to Bubba's um, birthday party. And Steve, I looked at the bill and they charged everybody 18%. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and Steve was finna give him a tip. So you're right. So on top of the 18%, they still getting a tip and they ain't gonna tell you that. They already gonna take it out. But I happened to look on that and say, hey man, they, they took 18%. You don't have to tip them. And he was like, oh, I was finna give him a tip. I said, he already took it. Mm -hmm. You have to give him nothing. What you said? <laughs> Ain't that optional? No. Oh, well. I they gonna get that. I know when they put that down for that tip, I see my total. I don't do none of that. I come in and I pay my time. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. God asked for 10%, but we we'll go to a restaurant and get him 18 Are y'all in the house? Mm -hmm. Do y'all see what I'm talking about here? Mm -hmm. And how easy we can get these verses out of the way. Y'all, listen. Um, Pastor, will you come next week with some cliche verses that we hear all the time or say? And y'all do the same thing. Because I don't want to move past this until we get it. And up a, I'm going to preach cliche verses up until Advent. Because we need it. I did the first one we preached on Sunday. And y'all need to hear that one. So I'm coming to another one that may not hear it a lot. But um, I think some in the church need Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 29. That's where I'm preaching from. Another cliche verse. And here it is. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Well, you know, Bishop, I didn't actually... Hey, Google the top 20 yeah. researched verses. Let me see if I can find 
and I actually when I looked at them, I didn't necessarily think that they were cliches. Right. Um, let's see. We need to look at them then. I'll just tell you a couple of them that were here. Like, of course, John three sixteen is there. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Right. Okay. Well, well that no, that's where we're coming from. That's where we're coming. Yeah, from. I did tell you, and Elder Lynn got it right. Yeah, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven is one of those. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, Romans eight and twenty eight, and mm -hmm. we know that in all things God mm -hmm. works for the good. That's one that's of them. A big one. Yeah. That's a big one. Uh, Joshua. All things going to work out for the good of those that, <laughs> yeah, but do you love the Lord? <laughs> is the question. You love something else more than him. But don't my version say like those that wait to on from the Lord? That's um, Isaiah 61? Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. They shall mount up wings of eagles. Like an eagle, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to preach that too. Because we love to do that stuff to make us feel good. But that verse, oh, so, so, so in essence, Amos chapter 5 verse 14. We could use that as a verse of encouragement when it is actually a verse of rebuke or, re, or call to repentance. Mm -hmm. So if you use, I, I want y'all to hear me here. I want y'all to hear me here. And I'm going I'm to I'm step down. If you use a verse out of context, does it have any power? Is it going to do what you wanted it to do? No. 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 The word of God itself, before some smart aleck says, the word of God power, yes it does, but not for you what you want it. Mm -hmm. It has power when you repent. If you don't repent, it ain't going to do it for you. Hmm. Just like Sunday, when it, it, knowing that Isaiah 54, verse 17a, which is what we would love to use, mm -hmm. how does it start off? Yeah, somebody help me. I got a lot in my head. Um, no, weapon. no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But I don't read nothing else going backwards or forward. For the, and, and verse 17 is the last verse, right? Mm -hmm. So. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, but you still struggling. Because the verse is for repentant sinners, not unrepentant sinners. If you are an unrepentant sinner, that weapon against you will prosper. In, in fact, it's going to tear your butt up. Why? Because you haven't repented from what you're doing and you kept doing it and you kept getting whooped. Mm -hmm. And you keep shouting that verse like God going to just take it away from you. Mm -hmm. He's not. Yeah. And don't blame God for what you did. That's right. Deacon Green. Um, I don't know like what I keep hearing like what that means by when you say that will prosper like it will Will not succeed is what New Living Translation said. Okay. So it's like that that weapon could be like anything or Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Your boo. Remember I said in in in, in and y'all gotta go back and watch that sermon. Cause I go back and watch them too, y'all. Go back and watch that stuff. And the question I asked was what object? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is being used for your destruction. Mm -hmm. What object? That object could be anything. Mm -hmm. Why do you think I'd be telling y'all? Let me tell y'all what a forest fire is. A forest fire is relationships. If it's not a good one, it ain't gonna get better. Mm -hmm. Cause you said that verse. Mm -hmm. That's true. But that's what people think. And folks, stay in those mm -hmm. dysfunctional relationships. Like you're going to change them. They will change. They'll get worse. Amen. That's true. <laughs> Living witness. Somebody. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see how us messing up the Bible like that? That's why the Bible is the best friend, tool, whatever you want to call it, we have. And also the worst. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be. Yeah, right. 
And people like me and Pastor Sharmita yeah. mm -hmm. have to take responsibility for this mm -hmm. because it's what we teach or not teach our people mm -hmm. which determines all of that. Mm -hmm. I was in the um, the eye lab today to get an eye exam. And there was a gentleman came up there who came with his wife. And um, the eye doctor came out and asked me what this meant. And I said, it's a clergy shirt. He said, you're a preacher. I said, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He came over and fist bumped me. I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to give me a good exam. <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, the guy sitting up there said, um, he said something like, um, um, going to hell, uh, uh, no, he said dying is a good thing. Y'all know what he meant by that, because when we die, we're going to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're exactly right. Or it depends on what decision you've made, it could be a bad thing. That's right. <laughs> right? So he was looking at the positive, which I was also. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you choose or not choose, then you've chosen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, dying is a good thing if mm -hmm. you have the gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, dying is a bad thing, That's right? right? Mm -hmm. So that just goes to show us how we look for Isaiah 54, 17s, mm -hmm. and not the part where you have to repent, which is the B and C clause of verse 17 in Isaiah 54. Does that make sense? Yes. Now y'all see why we're going to hang here for a little bit and go over these verses because now we, we know that the poor will always be among us. Ain't got nothing to do with poor people. It's all about greedy people. Or dishonest people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Woo, Jesus. That was good. All right. We only hit two verses, but... I had to talk about some things uh, before. Y'all with me? Amen. Are we getting anything out of this? Mm -hmm. Amen. You're getting smarter. <sighs> Kayla, did we clear up anything? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, y'all. Who's coming? Who's coming? Close us out. You I'm going to get out of the way. Thank you, Elder Linden, for um, manning our page and putting everything up there that we need. Um, bring your verses next week. Amen. And let's follow the rules of interpretation to see exactly what that verse means. Amen. Amen, y'all. And I'll see y'all Sunday with another cliche verse coming from Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have for you. you really? Do we? Mm -hmm. That's the next cliche verse on Sunday. I ain't going to tell y'all what the title is. You have to check it out for yourself, but it's a good one. Amen. Amen, y'all. Amen, y'all. Yeah. All right. I love you. Nothing you can do about it. See you soon. Hey, Bishop. Thank you for another thought-provoking <laughs> Bible study. Amen. Right, this is still for the tall people. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all, now for uh, a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this, this wonderful word that you brought forth and that you continue to teach us to be mindful of what you said so we can get it right because we have been called to bring forth your kingdom. And all these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, and now for the benediction. May the words of my mouth, May the words words of my mouth, mouth and the meditation of my heart and the meditation of my heart be acceptable within thy sight. Be acceptable, be acceptable within thy sight. sight. O Lord, O Lord, my strength, my strength, and my redeemer, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 See y'all next week, everybody. Good night, everybody.